We're going to start, if you guys don't mind, please stand up for the presentation of colors, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and also the invocation by Chaplain P. personnel present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Right face march. Good afternoon. I'm Chaplain Pete Sudi, and I'm honored to write for Chief Bridges' promotion and swearing in ceremony. Just a side note, <laughs> about seven years ago, <laughs> we, uh, we ran into each other. He was Sergeant Jeff Bridget then, and uh, we talked. Knowing me, is probably a long time. <laughs> and he encouraged me to interview for the Miranda Police Chaplain Station. And I thank you for that. Now may we open with prayer. Almighty God, we are assembled here today to celebrate the promotion and swearing in of Chief Jeff Pridget as the new chief of the Miranda Police Department. Lord, we ask you to bless Chief Pridget with leadership, with dedication, with courage, wisdom, strength, and integrity as he assumes this new role and responsibility. We pray that you would guide him in his decisions, inspire him to lead with justice and compassion, and walk beside him, Lord, and his officers, protecting them from seeing and unseen dangers as they protect and serve the community of Marin. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And congratulations to Bridget's family. Thanks, Jack. Y'all may be seated. And so it begins. Yeah, so. so, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, uh, first of all, welcome. Uh, I, I would normally introduce all the dignitaries, the police chiefs, and everybody out there that came to celebrate uh, this great event. But if you see the list of just family I got to announce, we'd be here for two days. So, uh, to all the leaders out there, dignitaries, elected officials, everyone, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is a great display and embodies exactly not only who Chief, uh, Chief Pritchett is, 
and what he represents, but also what the Moreno Police Department re represents. So I appreciate you all being here. Let me start with the family. <clears throat> We're gonna start with Mom Dorothy Perry. You give a round of applause for Mom. His wife, Tammy Pritchett. And I'm just gonna do this, man. His three GQ sons. You guys gotta stand up real quick. Stand, stand up, I'm telling you right now. Not to cuss here, but dang! <laughs> we have a, and I'm, you don't have to keep clapping on this. Go, I'll put it all together. How's that sound? All right, let me throw them all out here. Uh, the aunties, Lucille, Pauline, Judy, and Judy. Uh, we have cousin Kelly Berry with his daughter Brayden. We have uh, in law Pat, sister in law uh, and brother in law Tracy and Steve. We have niece Deja, and we have cousins Dinell and Paula. Um, anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's about right. <laughs> Cousin Shad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was the hardest part of today, ladies and gentlemen, is throwing that on out. So, um, welcome. It is a great day at Miranda Police Department, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. Well, okay, you go right this a sermon, but Michelle already got back and said, Amen. <laughs> I had the honor and privilege of standing up here once before for Jeff when he promoted to lieutenant. And I still remember uh, the words that were said even back then. And there were two traits that came back on Jeff over and over and over again when we did that presentation. And there was one that he is honest and he is fair. And that's something everybody will agree with about Jeff. Honest and fair. Now that wasn't just his family or his friends talking, that literally came from his peers, from the people he supervised, from the command staff. And he didn't learn that at the police academy. He didn't learn that in his 20 plus years in law enforcement. That was something that was instilled with him at a young age, the foundation of who Jeff is. And it's been a part of him and embodied him throughout his whole career. When he promoted to sergeant, lieutenant, uh, captain, and now the pinnacle man, chief of police. And that means something, uh, especially in this profession. So society, we've been taking some punches in law enforcement over you know, the recent years. And society demands, right, that the police department gets it right, that we provide unwavering protection, unparalleled service, and to do so with uncompromised integrity, right? But that starts with a leader, a leader that understands the true representation of what a leader should be, one that is humble, one of high character, one that has courage and incompetence, one who knows how to cast a compelling vision and bring everybody together to work and accomplish that mission. More importantly, one that models the behavior that they set forth, right? By his words, his actions, and even his emails, <laughs> represents everything that he states, and most importantly, is able to read a room and recognize opportunities where we can make a difference. Now that's easier said than done, but simply put, ladies and gentlemen, a true leader has the value of the people that he oversees. Now that could be lost today on many leaders, uh, and you guys probably could name a few out of your own history and what you see in politics and the news today, but it's not lost on Jeff Pritchett. This is a special day. It's a great day at Miranda PD. We appreciate you all being here, representing, supporting, uh, uh, not only the police department, but your success. Congratulations, my brother. We're proud of you. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce the town manager, Terry Rosamo, to say a few words and present uh, Jeff with his badge. Thank you, Captain. Uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, I'm a little bit ticked off, though, because you stole a large portion of my speech. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 uh, about a week ago, I started my speech, and uh, I finished it last night. And uh, <laughs> so get, get comfortable; it'll be a little while. Uh, I think. I think uh, if you've ever tried to uh, 
describe uh, Jeff Pritchett, uh, you know you can't do it in just a few words. And I give a lot of credit here to uh, what uh, Captain Jimenez just did uh, because I think he did a phenomenal job of describing Jeff Pritchett. And uh, when I was faced with the decision, I mean, any time I faced with a decision of bringing somebody into the organization or promoting somebody within the organization, hiring a department head, give great thought and consideration to that. Even brand new people coming in, officers, when I was over here as a police chief, we think a great deal about who we bring in because great organizations, quite frankly, are just comprised of great people doing great work. And um, sometimes those decisions are really easy. Uh, you know, when, when Frank Cassidy, an icon in this organization, uh, retired and, and uh, moved on, uh, it was a really simple decision for me, quite frankly, to promote uh, Jane Farrell to be our town attorney. And, but sometimes those decisions aren't that easy. I, I can tell you without hesitation that promoting this man over here, Jeff Pridget, to the position of police chief was a no-brainer for me. And uh, it is a history-making day. Where's, where's our historian, our new historian? Oh, right back there. It's a history-making day, Joe. Making note of that, right? It's a history-making day for a number of reasons. And this, this organization has been around quite a long time. But this is the very first time that this organization has had a person that started in this organization and rose through the ranks and became its police chief. And that's no small accomplishment. I think the other thing that makes this so unique and so special, and I, I was actually talking with Mr. Kennedy before we started here, and I said, you know, I, I have never been more excited about a promotion in my entire life, including my own promotions, than I am about the promotion that we're about to do here today. Because this is a, this is a, a guy, a young man, a kid who grew up in this community just a mile down the road. And he went to Estes Elementary, and he went to Miranda Middle School, and uh, he went to Miranda High School, and went to the University of Arizona, and he met his uh, beautiful wife, Tammy, here in, in elementary school, middle school. <laughs> Middle school, middle school, you got Mary out behind the, <laughs> out behind the convex uh, boxes back there or something, right? Has three amazing young men here as his children growing up in this community. And Jeff has amazing, and when I think about what, what do I need in a police chief, you need, you need a chief who has connections in the community and who's going to be relatable to the community. Check that box because that's Jeff Bridget, right? I mean, if anybody has it, there's no, I don't think even the mayor, where's the mayor, over here? I don't even think the mayor knows as many people as Jeff Pritchett in this community. <laughs> in fact, sometimes people, some people refer to him as, as the mayor of Moran. I know that hurts your feelings, Mr. Mayor, but... <laughs> but it's true, Jeff, Jeff has grown up here, he has amazing, has built amazing relationships in this community, and that's a huge part of being a police chief, is being able to connect with your community and have those uh, relationships. Uh, you know, the captain hit on it, Captain Minnis hit on it, uh, when he talked about, you know, the integrity, we, you know, what do you need to be a police chief? You need to be a person of high integrity, high character, high, high morals and, and standards, high expectations, and uh, when I go down the list, check, 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 check. It's Jeff Pridget, right? And, and when I think about the other things, being relatable and having people, you know, being able to relate to other people, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter to Jeff Pridget whether you live in a $3 million mansion on the top of Dove Mountain or whether you live in a cardboard box in the middle of the Santa Cruz River. Jeff Pridget can relate to you. He can interact with you. He can treat you with fairness and dignity and respect, right? Um, so... It is just an unbelievable honor for me because when I came here uh, to this town, uh, my thought process from the beginning is we need to raise up somebody from within this organization to take over as police chief. And uh, I didn't do it as the police chief, um, but to be able to do it now as the town manager, Jeff, I, I gotta tell you, man, it, it warms my heart, uh, makes me so happy, makes me so proud of you. 
uh, when, they, when they got here, you were not a motor officer. 13 years later, man, you were the police chief. And congratulations to you, dude. I mean, along the entire way, you have proven yourself to be caring, compassionate, competent, all of the things that, that we need to have in, in our police chief. And uh, I'm just so proud. And I will tell you guys that throughout my career, I have witnessed this. And this, this, is, this is not a, a theory. It is an absolute truth that an organization ends up taking on the qualities and characteristics of a leader of that organization. And, and they, will, they will interact with others based on the way their leader interacts with them as a whole, right? And the reason I point that out is because with Jeff Pridgett as our police chief, and I know this has been the case for a long time with, with our folks, but he's gonna take it to a whole new level in terms of the way our police department and our police personnel uh, interact and relate to this community. So I uh, just want to thank you, Jeff, for the work that you've done for the last 20 plus years uh, as a member of the Tom Moran and the Randall Police Department, and for the work that you're going to do for the next 20 years as police chief. <laughs> yes. 2044. So it's like that far away. It seems like it, but it goes goes fast. This month is not slow. This month is not slow. So at this time, uh, I would like uh, Jeff uh, to come on up, and I would like to invite Tammy uh, over here. And they are going to do the badge pink. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona and resolutions and ordinances adopted by the town of Marana and resolutions and ordinances adopted by the town of Marana that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies and defend them against all enemies foreign and domestic foreign and domestic and that I will faithfully and impartially, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of police chief for the town of Moran. Discharge the duties of police chief of the town of Moran. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So I do affirm. So I do affirm. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Mama Dorothy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh delete, delete, delete. <laughs> I did not wreck this. Jeffrey? Oh. Did you have this on your grandmother? 
this birthday. <laughs> <laughs> this is a special present that I'm presenting to you from her. And please enjoy this for your office. Thank you. I appreciate you. Everybody wipes away some tears. We're going to show a video real quick. <laughs> I've known Dorothy just as long as I've known Jeff, pretty much. We've met at Miranda Middle School in 1989, and we've dated throughout the years, and we got married in 2003. We have three boys. We have an 18-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 12-year-old. Two decades and three kids later, Tammy, with her mother-in-law by her side, is now preparing to watch her husband take on a new role, chief of police for the town of Marana. He's so good at what he does. He generally cares and he cares about his people. He always has, he cares about the community. A community he grew up in and one he served since the beginning of his career in law enforcement. He will help anybody with anything they need. Jeff's mother, Dorothy, agrees. She says her son has always been a leader, ambitious, enthusiastic about life and the people around him. He had some very nice mentors that helped him along the way, and I thank God for where he is today and the type of person that he is. And the other thing I admire about he never stepped on people to get to where he wanted to go, but he would help people along mm -hmm. the way and help them achieve as much as they could. As for the Marana community, Dorothy says to trust the future of their town is in good hands. I think he's a fantastic person. I think he'll do a wonderful job. And I don't think he takes anything for granted as far as this position or anyone that works on the police force. Everybody is important to him as an individual. Welcome, Chief Bridget. We are all wishing you the very best as you embark on this new adventure. that video the first day that I get back and we have our first admin team meeting I see Zach and Amanda in here and this is Zach here to my left but they usually they never show up to meetings I'm like something's going on so I go to Roberto and I'm like what are they doing here he's like oh we got a surprise for you and lo and behold they play that video so you can imagine how emotional I was after they showed that you know the beautiful words from my mom my wife and then they had to show those photos of when I was a little kid. <laughs> and that's when it really went downhill for me. Hey, you look at my boys, I'm like, don't cut your hair. <laughs> Just keep it, keep it. But um, in all seriousness, you know, I've done these interviews and, you know, been talked about for the past several days, and it's all been about me. And I want to take a moment, you know, to, for you folks to concentrate on this video here. So this is another thing that I saw in our break room when I returned. And I sat there and I looked at this video, this, this photo reel, for probably about 30 minutes in the break room by myself. I mean, you can imagine the emotions come up again, right? You know, we have some officers that are in here, past and present. You know, and it's not lost on me how much of an influence they've had on me in my career um, and my upbringing through this agency, right? And I can tell you, if it wasn't for these people, um, you know, even though I put the work in, I probably wouldn't be standing here before you today. 
you know, a lot of these folks, they were great mentors. They, uh, they grew me up to be where I wanted to be. They had the courage to be honest with me and tell me my strengths, but also tell me my weaknesses and help build me up. And I thank you all for that. I, I truly do. Um, I'll leave you with this. And my son Quincy, he's probably heard this before. Well, actually, I got more to talk about. But you know, there's a quote that I always tell these guys, the kids that I coach. And that the quote is, champions don't show up to get everything they want. They show up to give everything they have, right? So the men and women, past and present, in this video, my friends that I grew up, they truly are my champions. They showed up, they poured everything they had uh, into me to make me the man, the, fa the father, the, uh, the husband that I am today, the officer that I am. I can't thank you enough for that. Um, also, I want to acknowledge some friends that I have here in the, the audience, uh, the Amaro family, Bustamantes, Joplins, Candelarias, Sanchez's, um, of course, my Barry family, um, my Lee family. Is there any more family out there? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but thank you all, the Ryan family, Clemens, thank you all very much. Um, you know, this is just the, be the beginning of an amazing journey, and uh, it's an honor to be the chief of police and work along side of these uh, fantastic men and women in this organization. And uh, thank you all for the kind words the past couple of weeks, and thank you for coming out and supporting me and the Miranda Police Department. Have a great day.